Hey, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I want to talk about George Pickett, the man whose name is forever associated with Gettysburg and the charge that bears his name. You know, somehow Pickett is stuck in a vacuum around that event, that moment in time. You can't escape it. He can't escape it. His name and that battle and that charge are forever etched in the American memory. And, you know, Pickett actually is more of, he's more than that moment. Um, starting off in the U.S. Army, having a long career in the Confederate Army. We often forget about that, that he was a person who commanded men. And despite what happened to him at Gettysburg and his men, um, he, he participated in numerous actions. And so um, folks are not likely to recall or even know that he was wounded uh, at the Battle of Gaines Mill in 1862, part of the Peninsula Campaign. One of his volunteer aides, a man named Walter Hamilton Harrison, who went on to be a member of Pickett's staff, wrote a wonderful book called Pickett's Men. And um, in that book, he talks about the Battle of Gaines Mill. He talks about Pickett's wounding and gives you a sense that that battle was in some ways as intense uh, in terms of the firepower as what they would experience a year later at Gettysburg. So I want to read a passage from the book that describes a little bit of the Battle of Gaines's Mill and then also talks about the wounding of Pickett. So here's Walter Harrison talking about the event and he begins, and I'm going to start the passage here when he describes the earliest part of the battle. Quote, serving at this time as his volunteer aide de camp, I was following him, that's Pickett, when he directed me to remain with the other regiments, saying that he would send me orders for their movement. As these two regiments, with him, moved out of cover, a few puffs of smoke and sharp rifle cracks from the oak field in front proved that the enemy were not only concealed there, but wide awake to our movements. We had thrown out a line of skirmishers from the 19th Regiment to feel them. Nothing as yet had been heard from General Jackson's column, although we knew he was somewhere on our left, the general order being that we were to attack in front upon hearing his musketry open upon the enemy. We had not long to wait. General Longstreet's adjutant general, Major Sorrell, soon brought the order to advance. In the absence of General Pickett from this part of the field and being temporarily charged by him to await his orders, I rode up to General Longstreet and received the order from him in person to charge with the three regiments directly across the field and upon the enemy's works. The 19th Regiment was now on the right, being the center of the brigade, the 28th next, and the 56th on the left. In this order, we charge at the double quick over this terrible piece of ground. General Pickett, with the other two regiments, moving down at the same time from the extreme right, the five regiments were again united in the center of the field and pressed the charge in full line of battle, brigade front. In a few minutes, the skirmish line of the enemy was driven in or literally run over. The fire from the enemy's batteries and small arms was now terrific. I have never seen such a storm of projectiles of every description. And at short range, concentrated upon so narrow a field of battle. The effect upon our ranks was terrific, but the brave old brigade pushed on. The men fell around us like leaves in autumn. The officers were being fast thinned out. Colonel Withers, leading his regiment, was soon shot down and supposed mortally wounded. Lieutenant Colonel Slaughter, commanding the 56th, was wounded as badly. Neither of these gallant officers was ever again fit for service in the field. Many others doing as valiant devour on this bloody ground were, according to the inscrutable providence of battles, 
preserved entirely or else slightly wounded. It is difficult to comprehend how anyone could have come out of such a fire unhurt. It was almost impossible to see or hear anything distinctly. Such was the continual rush of the shot and shell. General Pickett was within 10 paces of me when he was shot from his horse. I did not perceive his fall until he said to me in very expressive terms that somebody had hit him. I immediately dismounted, examined his wound, and found the hole of a mini ball in his shoulder. This scarcely occupied a moment when we pressed on with the brigade leading our horses. So, stop there, give you a flavor of the Battle of Gaines Mill, give you the description of General Pickett being shot in the soldier shoulder by a mini bullet, and all this a first person account of Major Walter Hamilton Harrison. The commentary by Harrison was written not long after the war. The book was published in uh, 1870. Um, so it's really early on, some good primary source material. You know, all soldiers suffered from sort of some sort of bias and, and point of view. But I like to think that Harrison's views were not particularly, they were certainly weren't tainted, tainted by old age or by um, sort of the romance of war that would go on decades later. Although there's a little bit of that in his writings, for sure. But this seems to be a pretty honest and authentic account, a blow-by-blow -blow description of going into battle with Pickett's men. So there you have it. That's today's episode of Life on the Research Trail. We'll see you again. Until then, take care.